Hi, welcome to Twisted Wave 101. In this video we're going to show you some preferences for Twisted Wave and also some window buttons. So let's open up Twisted Wave. The first time you open up the program you're often greeted with the dialog box on when you want to check for updates. I usually leave that weekly as I like to be kept abreast of the updates for bug fixes and also new features. When I open up a program for the first time, I usually like to go into its preferences menu to check to see what I can do. So let's do that now. In the first tab of the preferences dialog box, you're greeted with options for the main program, whereas for editing, you can change how you edit audio, and finally in devices, what devices are connected to your computer. Let's go back to general and take a look at some of the options. For the voice of a recording person, an untitled document on launch is probably a good thing. When you open Twisted Wave, you usually want to start recording. For the person who edits more often than records, changing it to don't open anything is probably a better option, as I like to open files as I need to open them, and I don't want to keep closing down an untitled document every time I open the program. I'm more of an editor, so I'll choose this option. I like to keep the files zoomed out all the way when I open in because I like to look at the volume levels and also the time duration of each file. This is also the default, so I'll leave that there. This box, Detect Split Multi-Channel Files When Opening, is also checked, and this will detect if a file is part of a group, such as an LCR5171, such and so forth. When audio files are recorded in some editors, including Twisted Wave, a timestamp is created with the file in its own metadata. So if you were to open up a WAV file and investigate the metadata as it was recorded in Reaper or Pro Tools or Cubase or even, I think, Adobe Audition, you might see a timestamp. Twisted Wave respects the timestamp if you leave this option checked and will start the file at the time the file was actually originally recorded. I uncheck this option because I prefer to see the file start at the zero second mark so that I can see the duration of the file that I'm editing. The time format that you're looking at here, which indicates, uh, where it, or which is indicated by the meter ruler up here, is based on what you choose here. Time is usually what we're looking at, so that works. However, if you're working in samples for very fine editing, or in film or TV, SMPT, film, PAL, or NTSC, you can change that as well. Let's go back to time. Twisted Wave offers a really nice large meter over to the right for you to see your levels as you're getting them or when you're recording, and an even more handy RMS level indicator down below, which gives you a numerical value for the average volume over a period of time, in this case the integration window of 10 seconds. RMS is more closely how human beings hear sound, as averages over a period of time and not instantaneously like you would find in a peak meter. When you record, you'll see variable bouncing of your audio, sometimes going up very close to zero, which indicates that a peak is getting really close to the dBFS range. RMS will indicate the average over time and is very helpful when you're working with audiobooks as they have a level at which you're supposed to come in when you're finished mastering. I leave the integration window at 10 seconds and I leave the loudness indication at RMS. If I was working in broadcast, I might change this to loudness units full scale or the spec from BS 1770 or in Europe R128, but I'm not, so I'm going to leave that as RMS. They basically do the same thing. The way they indicate loudness is based on different filters. For simplicity's sake, let's leave it at RMS. Twisted Wave has been registered to all users of this computer because I've checked this button and put in my admin password. So if I create a new account, or if I have a guest account, Twisted Wave shows up there and is registered and ready to go. Like I said, that dialog box, when you first open Twisted Wave, asks you about update frequency. I leave this here, which you can check as weekly, and if you'd like, you can check now with this button. You can also download an app for your iOS device, your iPhone or iPad, and control Twisted Wave from a remote location. With that app, you need to enable this option here if you have that device. Let's go up to editing. In editing, the first option checked or maybe unchecked is auto extend selection to zero crossing. When you select audio that you have been recording in Twisted Wave, sometimes without this button checked, you can select audio that appears above or below the zero crossing line and when you cut and paste these back and forth together, you'll often end up with clicks and pops. 
By selecting this option, Twisted Wave will take your selection and move the cursor to the nearest zero crossing, which is a very fine amount, allowing you to cut and paste freely throughout your entire document without fear of any clicks or ticks or pops. I leave this checked if it hasn't been checked already. You can lock channels together if you'd like, if you're working in a 5-1 setup or a 7-1 setup and you need to keep the phase coherency between the channels. I don't usually do that because I'm not usually working in 5-1 so I leave it unchecked, but it wouldn't hurt to leave it checked if you wanted to. You can zoom centered on your mouse when you zoom in or on the cursor. I leave this unchecked as I like to zoom in on the cursor. Some of the options here are available up above as well, and this is how we play audio back and forth. Auto scroll when playing means that the audio follows the cursor, or rather the window follows the cursor as you start to play. This option is best for most people. And you choose smooth scrolling to have it smooth scroll while it's playing, rather than a page by page choppiness. An option that some of you will check often, or uncheck often, is move cursor back after playing. If I drop my cursor here and hit play, the cursor will follow off the screen leaving me to still indicate or see where my audio was when I left it there, and then come back when I'm done playing it if I leave this checked. If I uncheck this, the cursor will stay with the audio, and if it's gone off screen, the next time I hit play, it'll start at that location and go forward. We'll take a look at that in just a second in real time. Scrubbing mode, which might have been set to repeat, is how you can scrub audio back and forth, kind of like a DJ does with a record, to find things like clicks and pops. The best option I found for this is position. We'll look at that in a second too. When I'm recording, the waveform will show as I'm recording. 30 seconds is default. You can set that for 10 seconds if you'd like. For shorter periods, one minute or show all if you'd like as well. And then transient threshold will allow you to tab through your audio to the transients or big hits or pops or beats. This is very helpful when you're editing music that has beat structure, things like hip hop, uh, dance music, uh, general electronic music, and sometimes even rock. You would use this to tab to the first big beat, maybe tab a bar down and cut, and then loop that selection over and over again. Without hitting right at the transient and making a cut at the right point, the loop or future loop that you create might not come in time and will sound odd. This is set at 25, but I'm going to leave that there. Lastly, we get a devices menu, which shows us what's connected to our computer or allows us to set what we need to connect to our computer. Our laptops and desktops are pretty stupid devices. They just do what we tell them to do. And if you plug a microphone in, don't expect that your computer is going to understand what you want to do with it. System setting indicates that it's taking the max preferences, which show up down in system preferences below, and sound for input and output. So if I needed to choose a microphone, I could, as I have, an AT2020 USB here, and you can see my voice is bouncing here. Output, I've, I've chosen to select my internal speakers, which are coming out of my laptop. You could choose a sound card, which I have a couple here, or even an Apple TV. I'm going to close this down. What I like to do when I first connect a microphone is check that and make sure that Twisted Wave is recording with that device. Often when people ask me to take a listen to their audio, I complain that the audio doesn't sound very good and the first thing I asked them was, were you recording with the microphone? They almost always say yes, but they don't know that what happened was the system setting was set to the lid of their laptop mic and not the mic they plugged in. A simple check by scratching the microphone with your fingernail and checking the meter over to the right or just going into input device and choosing the microphone you want to record with will alleviate those issues. Buffer size is the allowable shelf space that the computer needs or holding space that it uses to write code before it sends it to the hard drive. When we talk about a term latency, what we're talking about is the delay from a voice to a microphone and down into your processor and finally to your hard drive and then back out to your headphones. Sometimes when we record, a computer isn't fast enough to process that in real time, and you end up with a stereo, phasey, kind of doubly sound in your headphones, which is usually pretty annoying. The amount of buffer that's filled up before it's sent to the hard drive is indicated by these numbers here. A lesser number indicating a shorter buffer, which means the audio streams more quickly to the hard drive and comes back off. You might think that setting this to 14 is a really great option, but just beware that if your computer is a little slow, it'll prioritize writing audio to the hard drive and maybe not prioritize other things 
like screen refreshes and network calls and will end up with uh, some ticks and pops sometimes in your audio without even knowing it. 512 is default and that works for most people but if you need some real-time audio back from your headphones and you still hear a little phasiness you might want to reduce this down to 128, 64, or even 32. This is totally governed by wearing headphones and listening to yourself while you record which is only available through software in the case of which I'm using an Audio-Technica 2020 USB microphone with no headphone setting on it by checking the playthrough and recording. When I enable this button, Twisted Wave will play the audio while I'm recording it back out through my headphones so that I can hear myself record. Many people also complain when they first open Twisted Wave that they can't hear themselves back through the headphone port that they have plugged into their computer. This is why. It is not checked. Once this is checked, the buffer size governs how fast the audio comes back out. If you have an audio interface, you often have a headphone port, and hardware always supersedes software, so your buffer settings will be in your hardware device settings, and sometimes even on a knob on the front of your device. But when using a USB microphone with no headphone port, you need to choose playthrough and recording to hear yourself back. The last option here is select channels, which allow you to select what input channels you'd like to use to record. In this case, I'm using channel 1, which is prioritized to the top, and then what you want to hear back through output. My sound card is simply my Mac computer, so I'm left with channel 1 and 2, which often comes out as left and right. If I had a bigger sound card with multiple outputs, I could prioritize where I want the audio to come out of channels 5 and 6, or 15 and 16 if I so preferred. You can always reset these back if you'd like to with the reset button. So let's go ahead and hit OK. I want to show you a couple things, but to do that I'm going to need to record some audio. So first I'm going to go up to the record button, but before I do that I'm recording in stereo here, which is not advantageous for the voiceover artist or a single microphone. So I'm going to go to edit and convert this whole thing to mono first, and then hit record. Testing, testing, hello. Welcome to Nuance Tone Twisted Wave 101 Tutorials. Record turns to stop, uh, but the spacebar is also playback, start, and stop, and you should probably get used to using the spacebar for that because it's much faster. So let's first look at some of the buttons we have above. I can click anywhere with my mouse. You can see the yellow cursor is where I put it. If I hit the back button up top, it sends it to the beginning. Likewise, if I also hit it forward, it will send it to the end. Much easier to use those buttons than to go down and try to get it close to the edge without resizing windows. Play, of course, plays Testing. and turns to pause. Record will record right in between the audio. Loop allows me to highlight a selection of audio and hit play. Testing. Hello. Testing. Hello. Or click loop once for straight playthrough. Testing in which case it only plays once. I prefer to leave this on loop because sometimes I do loop audio. I just recorded an extra bit of audio here. I'd like to undo that, so I'm going to hit the undo button and it'll bring it back to what it was. I can redo that or bring it back with the redo button. And these also map to your keyboard with command Z for undo and shift command Z for redo. Zoom in allows me to zoom in on my cursor as I click it so I can see quieter or more granularity in the audio and I can hit zoom out to zoom all the way out as well. Notice as I'm zooming the map window or universe window up above starts to shrink to show me where I am in the recording which is very helpful especially if you're doing a long audiobook chapter of about an hour and a half and also allows me to click and drag around my audio to find new sections. Sometimes when I edit, I like to look at the quieter parts, and I use vertical zoom for that by clicking and shoving up. Not so concerned with the audio here. I know it's not peaking, it's okay, but I might want to replace some room tone or check some ticks and pops in this area. Again, to check ticks and pops, we can use scrubbing, and because we set that to position, if you click in the time bar up above here, you'll see that I can scrub left and right, and over on the right-hand side, you'll see the meter moving. The audio might not be coming out in this video because I'm recording, but if you try this at home, it'll work. I'm going to zoom fully out, and I'm going to click vertical zoom once to bring myself back to normal. We have a normalize button over on the right, which allows me to increase the volume of the entire track from the hottest peak to the threshold I set. 
How that works is by me double clicking all the audio, hitting the normalize button, setting the threshold at which I want to set. I usually normalize to negative one. However, standard set normalization to negative three. What this does is go through all of the audio that you've selected, finds the hottest peak, I'm guessing it's this one here, and moves that peak up to this number that you set, indicated, as you can see, by a dB meter over on the left. So if I set this to zero, which happens to be right up here, you'll see, I think, this peak go up to zero and everything increase in ratio. And there we go. If I wanted to perform a fade in, I can highlight some audio and click fade in. And on the other side, I can highlight some audio and hit fade out. Kind of nice to clean things up sometimes. That's a linear fade, which means it goes from the hottest part of your selection all the way down to the least part in a straight line. The cursor position over here on the right allows me to see where my cursor is. And the selection length, which is very helpful, allows me to select some audio and see how long it was. So if I was going for a 15 second, 30, 45, or one minute spot, I can select the audio and see if I've gotten in time. Metadata allows me to edit the metadata that's embedded in the file for wave or B wave rather, broadcast wave, and also MP3 files. And then the SoundMiner database is for tagging for SoundMiner sound effects uh, database usage for checking. Um, SoundMiner is a database that we use for sound effects gathering. Um, in post-production. Most of us will just use music. I can title this mic, um, album, great album, artist, mic, year, 2014. Most of us won't ever edit this metadata, but this will stick along with the file if I want to. The input and output device that we talked about through system preferences, or rather twisted wave and preferences, can also be checked up in the menu options. The first thing I do when I open Twisted Wave is make sure that the microphone I'm using to record is selected so that I'm recording good audio. And you can find that up in Audio, Input Device, and you can choose the microphone you'd like to record with. And of course, Output Device, you can choose where you want the audio to come out of. One other option that might or might not be shown is the text underneath these buttons, which can be found by right-clicking, which on a Mac is by holding the Control button and clicking in this menu bar up here which shows some options. I usually have it shown as icon and text because I like to see the names of these options. However, usually when you start Twisted Wave for the first time, you're shown this. So let's control and click again for icon and text. Most of you will have a slider right between the fade out and the cursor position, which indicates playback of Twisted Wave. I usually get rid of that because I don't like to overload the speakers when I'm playing back audio. So I do that by going to Customize Toolbar. Normally for you guys when you first open, you see something like that. I drag this off and let it go. If I want the default toolbar again, I can drag the entire default toolbar up to the top and it gives me back what I had in the beginning. Again, I like to take this off because I don't like to over increase the volume of playback. I like to use the sound up and sound down buttons on my laptop or on my audio interface for that. You can put flexible space or spaces in between these buttons if you prefer to move them. Let's say I use normalize a lot. I might want to put it over here next to record and maybe fade in and fade out over on the right. In this case, I'm just going to reset everything and then drag off my volume slider and hit done. And that's it for this video. We look forward to seeing you in some future videos, so stay tuned.